Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 595. That is 595 of the Agostino Zynga show for once. I've got the actual number of the show right and correct so do not correct me in the comments, do not send me emails, do not send me DMs and do not hassle me in the discord because I get the numbers wrong. I got it right today so just leave me alone baby. (laughs) <laughs> only joking but yeah hope you guys are well wherever this may find you i know it's been a while since i'd last checked in but i do promise to get back on the wagon and be more consistent this week and the weeks coming up because i do enjoy and love doing this podcast but as you guys know work gets into the middle of things the summer holidays it's really hot in where i am in my apartment it's hard to record and keep the windows closed because you don't want the road sounds to come and ignore you and disturb you whilst you're recording it's loads of nonsense that happen so it sounds like dsp excuses but i promise they're not for whatever reason there the thing flipping just stopped recording i think because i'm the one that's pressed it and made it not record but hey ho here we are we're back again in the hot seat hope you're well wherever this podcast will be finding you i'm doing absolutely sparkling absolutely fine fasting as usual running as usual working out as usual and doing all the things i need to do to keep my body and mind nice and healthy during these pathetic pathetic months that we're living in i've actually got a bit of a w-e-d-d-i-n-g that i'm meant to be going to hopefully soon and i'm actually going to try and do something a bit extreme in terms of getting my lbs down so if you see some drastic changes in my appearance within the next four weeks or so don't be alarmed don't be scared don't be writing me essays in the comments saying i guess you know you need to eat some more you look too skinny blah 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 i'm doing it for a reason i'm doing it for a specific event a specific day so that's exactly what i'm doing it for so mind your business and leave me the hell alone okay okay cool so that's what i'm basically thinking you'll do for the most part and um what's i've been up to oh um over the weekend what i do so over the weekend as per usual i was working most of the weekends i didn't really have much time to really you know enjoy and frolic and do the things i needed to do plus i had this really annoying issue in my building where you know the electric wasn't really working as great as it should do and then for the sunday for the most part the wi-fi was basically down for the majority of saturday evening heading into sunday morning which made it hard to you know just live and do normal things which is funny because when the wi-fi goes down for the most part it does kind of reveal how dependent I am on those kind of things, right? Obviously, you've got your phone you can use, but there's nothing like sitting down on your laptop and watching something, right? Or checking out social media or whatnot. And it was very evident that as soon as the Wi-Fi went, my day completely was devoid of any sort of um, purpose, you know what I mean? I got really, I got really sleepy. Um, I got really lethargic, and the day just kind of really drudged by until the Wi-Fi did come back on later on in the afternoon. But it was a bit of a mad one because it seemed to only happen to my apartment. I kept checking the, the kind of online, you know, service update things to see if anything in my area was affected, but nothing. And of course, I don't really live in a building where you know you have nice neighbors. So I can't exactly go and knock on people's door. I could if I wanted to, but you know, I, I don't want the image of me knocking on someone's door randomly during the day asking if their Wi-Fi is working. That's a bit weird. And a bit pathetic so i just did what most men do i just shut my mouth swallowed it and just carried on keep and just kept on going actually and you know luckily enough it did come back early on in the afternoon so i was able to kind of reconvene get back to working and just live my everyday life after that happened on the saturday i went to fold of course because where else am i gonna be in this flipping london in in this um city devoid of actual decent nightclubs the one decent one we have i'm gonna spend a lot of time there and i'm probably thinking after going this recent time that i maybe spent too much time there. i need to give it a bit of a rest or give it a bit of a break and start maybe exploring some other places but you know the other places aren't that great that's the problem with it and it's just so good in there but you know some reasons i'm going to pull up later on about why i want to make a bit of a change but anyway so i ended up going to fold um i ended up going to the night which they do for residents called resistance or resistance so however you say it or whatever maybe i went to the second one i missed the first one unfortunately i like to always go to like the first of these type of events because it's nice to kind of see what the vibe is um and just kind of be there when it kind of happens the first time it's quite nice to kind of know hey i was there when it you know when they put their first party on similar to when folder opened and they had their very very first party i was one of the people there sweating my ass off absolutely going crazy talking to everybody about the place you know um eulogizing about it as i have done on this channel and just kind of you know spreading the gospel of fold after i went to that first party because i was so proud that i went to the first one and it was so fucking amazing too so resistance number two resistance number two was really really good i've got to be honest and this is coming from somebody who i think no this is coming from somebody like myself um who kind of i think i spent way too much time there over the last few weeks and i've kind of gotten a little bit bored of it 
And I think the reason why I got bored of it was because the nights I went to weren't that great. I'm not going to name the nights, but the nights I went to, I don't think were all that amazing. And the reason behind it for the most part is that you know, I, I'm sure if when you start when you start a club, you you obviously start with good intentions. You want to probably get your mates involved. You want to book some people that you like and stuff. But I'm imagining when you do get to the actual bare, you know, the bare brass knuckles of a fucking club and absolutely running it day to day, there are a lot of things that you kind of maybe have to compromise on. And I feel like maybe in the last few months and stuff, we've seen a little bit of that with Fold in terms of their bookings and people who they're playing, people who's playing there, nights they're putting on and stuff, things that they're trying to give a go and try or blah, 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 that clearly you have to kind of make sure you keep the lights on so you can't just, you know, afford to just have your mates on and use underground people. You need people who are actually going to be able to sell tickets, um, get people through the door, get people spending at the bar, bloody blah, 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 blah. So, um, nights like um, Resistance, I don't take for granted because for the most part, you know, they have to kind of keep the lights on so they kind of book, you know, some nights that aren't the greatest with some people that I probably shouldn't be going out of my way to see them play because they usually play the same old tie sets. They're playing all over Europe whenever they're touring, which again, I don't blame them because I think being a professional DJ sometimes, you maybe do lose a bit of the love for playing and for discovering new records because you're just always on a grind. You know I mean, it's always up an airplane, an airport, a hotel, a nightclub. You're not really, looking, not really getting to explore the city or hang out with people you're just going in and out in and out in and out of nightclubs and airports and whatever it may be right um all day long so clearly when you get to the club the last thing you're thinking about is taking people on a musical journey or like you know showing them some new tune you just want to play a half decent set make sure they're dancing and keep it moving let your check and bounce or so, so you can basically file your invoice after so um Night Sack Resistance I don't take for, for granted because the whole premise behind it is that they had this night to showcase their residence because usually the residence night was on kind of the unofficial resident night was like unfold but i guess now unfold has turned into like a friends and family type thing and also an, an an occasion for them to also kind of um randomly have a really high caliber dj come in and play who can't exactly announce you know that they're playing because they have a non-compete clause in their contract or stuff a good example i think was last weekend on sunday just past i saw that marcel deepman actually played i think marcel deepman if i'm not mistaken played at fold recently in unfold so that's clearly a, a book they probably wouldn't have been able to do if they weren't able to open on Sundays and because Unfold they don't publish the lineups beforehand it's a good way to get people like that on board and obviously you know imagine you know if you're some local person underground person playing you've just started out new and you're playing alongside flipping someone like Marcel Deep you know you get to see him play live and direct I mean it's pretty sick so for a person like me a partner like me who's a bit you know I'd say a little bit on the snobby side when it comes to nights out I do like to see people that I would say I'm trying to maybe get to a level of or kind of supersede in terms of like the level of DJing. So it's quite nice to see resident people playing. And obviously it gives someone like myself who actually wants to DJ too an opportunity to see what kind of, what the level is to play at that kind of club. Do you know what I mean? For somebody who is kind of a resident, who's kind of coming up in the industry and whatnot. Because a lot of those guys on the lineup are obviously legit and they've been playing for a long time, but they're not like big, big, you know, ticket names and stuff. So it's great to see that kind of thing. And I think in general also, because of the people that are playing there, they're mostly residents and most people who aren't, aren't that well known, a lot of people that come to see them are usually friends so the vibe is really electric that's what something i noticed straight away the vibe was so much better than the last few times i've been at fold it was really good vibe like you could see a lot of friends and family had come out to come see their you know whatever um their friends play behind the decks and stuff and um, a lot of support was happening there people actually on the dance floor you know going crazy even though people like to sit in the green room a lot a lot of the friends and family i, was, I did see a lot of the friends actually on the dance floor giving their support hooting hollering whistling and shit so that was absolutely amazing and just in general i just want to you know sing its praises at night because i think I'm sure over time, maybe we won't see these nights as often because I'm sure there'll come a point where you just have to keep the lights on and you can't be putting on these events every single month because they're costing you money, blah, 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 because you want to make sure people coming in, buy tickets, buying beers, you know, the usual promoter stuff or the usual, you know, club owning stuff, I'm assuming, with rent and water bill costs and security guard. I can, I can just imagine how much it must cost to run that space on a, on a week, everyday basis, isn't it? But I really do hope that they do continue doing these nights because I honestly do think these nights are a far better advertisement for what Fold's about than anything else they do. Than all the other nights they put on, you know, if they invite Flipping Richie Hall in there, Ricardo Villalobos, doesn't matter. I still think Nights Like Resistance and the stuff they do at Unfold is a way better, um, is a way better, um, what would you call it? Is a way better not see if you're a business but it's a way better kind of impression of what you might think folds about in the vibe 
and the people that go there. I really do think so. Um, then all the other big nights passing for me and I danced my face off. I wasn't there for that long because again, I had work in the morning so I couldn't stay that long. So I stayed to about half four and obviously for me it's easy because I could just cycle over there. It takes like 10 minutes. So that's pretty decent. And I had a barn storm of a night. I think my night was maybe a bit affected in terms of my vibe and how maybe stoic and still I was if anybody might have saw me I was kind of just minding our business just walking around st standing in corners and shit maybe because I was you know trying out this new thing where I don't drink when I go out and stuff which is very difficult to kind of get into the mood of dancing when you kind of come out late because I left my house about half one you're not drinking people are already up and high and drunk by the time you get there and then you're trying to catch up and then you're like Ugh. do you know what I mean it's not the best um, way to do it but I do like it because in terms of myself you know being a DJ and being somebody that's a, also a music fan and fanatic I actually do enjoy going to nightclubs and actually enjoying the music and not just going there to get drunk or high you know what I mean that's definitely one of my main prerogatives so um, it's good to kind of have that you know drunkness kind of taken out of it by not drinking alcohol and just going there sober having some water in it and they're really cool with giving you glasses of water with ice in there as well which is really nice because you know it really gets hot in there but the sound system was absolutely amazing that day i'm not sure if they you know particularly tuned it because to do favors for people who are playing with their friends but and their colleagues but god damn the sounding fold is so good they might have to do the shape and the size of the club how it's kind of like a extended rectangle kind of shape but god damn it man it's really good really fucking good sound um absolutely barnstorm i think by the time i got there i saw the end of james newmarch set and then annabella um annabella aurora playing and she was banging like this girl whoever she is i don't really too familiar with her but she's definitely a resident um, at fold was really really good um so good that i'm actually going to play a little audio clip that i recorded there because of course you know i take pictures over there and they're doing really well because i feel as if the last few months i've been there because prior when i used to go um they used to give you a little sheet and they used to tell you to take the stickers off of the little sheet like little circle things and they put it on there this time and the last few times i've gone there now um before that sheet of paper will be given to you in the queue as you go past the, the gates now when you go there they put the sticker on at the gate like how they do in berlin do you know what i mean they give it to you at the gate they don't let you go through um into the club kind of deep in they kind of give it to you right there and the security guard puts it on like this time around when i was there he actually placed it on the back of the phone so that was pretty cool to see so they're clearly taking the whole no photos thing really seriously and again i keep saying it all the time it does make a difference i know it's wanky i know it's a little bit you know cringe and it's a little bit you know trying to beg it with the berlin thing but let's be real it does make a difference you can't deny that places like fold and other clubs or other club nights around london who kind of go out of their way to make sure people don't take pictures you can't deny that the vibe on the dance floor isn't better i'm sure a lot of it has to do with the you know loads of queer lgbtq plus folk people that go to these kind of parties and they make it fun because they dance they get dressed up and shit yeah cool but in general i think the reason why these parties are so much fun is because people can take their the phone cover it and if you go into even to smoking there you go into smoking there you just see mad people just talking it's actually one of the most um it might be one of the more um socially uncomfortable smoking areas to go to especially if myself being a solo raver and being somebody that's not really going there to get drunk and stuff it might be one of the most uh, awkward places to go to uncomfortable because everyone's talking everyone's in like little groups talking to each other and you feel like everyone's friends but they probably was bumped into each other right there but it's clear as day that the phone thing works because you don't see that many people on their phone yeah might be some people there taking phone calls and stuff but you don't see people just like sit on their phone like zombies and shit so that strategy definitely has worked and definitely is a good thing that they've done um at that club but anyway i recorded a quick quick little audio clip this is I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a clip taken from the star of um annabelle royer set over there at resistance and um yeah gonna play it for you so you can get an idea of what the night's about and like i said please support resistance if you can or go to nights like you know unfold that they put on there at fold i really do think there are better examples of what they do there in that club and i really do think that those nights is general especially how they're building up those djs are good play good way to kind of support people when they're coming up as well because you never know these kids end up being the next superstars yeah i mean to take over and shit but yeah this is a little clip um from resistance the other day at fold and i think this i'm pretty sure this is annabelle arroyo playing i'm pretty sure
yeah, that was Resistance O Two at Fold. Definitely recommend you check it out. And a little notice I just remembered as well. What I remembered also that was really kind of um obvious at that time when I was there was that there was definitely you could tell that it was a residence only night because I feel like whenever you go residence only night, the DJs look like they're legitimately having fun. They're legitimately chuffed to be playing. They're legitimately like wanting to show off their skills, quote unquote. And you saw a lot of that, a lot of kind of long mix blends, a lot of chopping, just a lot of really cool styles, expressions and shit. And just people really performing at the at their kind of highest level that they can possibly perform because they went to show up in front of their friends and just display their skills in general. I really did think that was a big difference. Again, someone that's gone there quite often, I think that really did make a big um, difference to my um, f- the, the amount of fun that I had there. And again, like I said, that Annabella Rio girl is absolutely insane. Like really, really good. I was really taken aback by how good um, she was. Um, just, you know, and I'm pretty sure she was, there was parts of it where she was playing vinyl as well. Just like insane, insane level levels of mixing insane levels of track selection um really was a musical journey and i really did enjoy it and again i only saw the end of james new marsh and again the end of um, the whole set of annabelle Arayo, but i missed um gareth wilde when he played i think he came on towards the end i'm pretty sure i saw him come later on at the end of the night but yeah all in all really enjoyable really really liked it as per usual excellently organized and all that can't really p- complain about anything they do over there they run a really good great ship and yeah all things man all things are good over there But having said that, it did get me thinking in general, right, about um, how, I guess, um, what's that word called? How can I meh? I'm feeling about nice out in recent times. And I think a lot of it may have to do with my lack of involvement in it. Maybe, right? Maybe I think if I'm being really self-aware, I think the fact that I'm not playing as often as I would like to, the fact that I'm not going to do mixes and record them at pirate studios like i said i would as often as i would like to um and just the fact that i'm not just involved as i probably was in the past is just a little bit annoying but i did make decisions myself it wasn't something that i was kind of pushed out into doing i did purposely make the decision a few years back to kind of stop promoting and not doing parties anymore because i was just wanting to focus more on doing kind of my dj stuff and by proxy i kind of did promote my own parties because in order to play i kind of had to book myself and whatever it may be but um that's what I kind of focus on doing. I went to perfect my craft, get better at it, and then obviously grow and develop and obviously, you know, get better and get, you know, um, be able to get better bookings and whatnot and travel the world and do the things that I kind of want to do in that kind of space for however long I want to do it. But in general, there is an aspect of also getting involved that would involve me because I haven't even done this yet, which would involve me, you know, actually setting up and doing the zine i've always wanted to do which was kind of a nightlife scene exploring all things about nightlife i'll be talking about you know crazy shit like drugs and drinking and you know going out and keep you know maybe hot button topics of, around nightlife in terms of abuse maybe in terms of representation whatever it may be i'll just kind of i wanted to always create that kind of like zine little thing that i'd kind of just leave at record stores just just a kind of like um just a sort of like um a kind of a project that I kind of make for myself do you know what I mean um, nothing that I'm kind of looking to kind of you know become the next ID magazine but just something that I think I would love to see if I popped into like Fonica Records I saw this little zine that spoke about nightlife and that was kind of you know funny informative and just kind of clearly came from somebody that gave a shit about the thing that most people probably don't give a shit about right because i actually do give a shit about nightlife i'm reading news about stuff around the world and whatnot and i care about it in a way that i probably shouldn't be caring about it if i actually had a life and friends but hey this is the place that we're at but anyway i was thinking about the my mere attitude towards nightlife and stuff and one of the things that kind of is really something that i'm still kind of getting to grips with and i kind of feel a bit cringe about is the whole like techno nightlife attire thing that whole dressing that people do when they go out and i feel like it rubs me up the wrong way because it's more of a personal issue because i remember when i was growing up i was always the kind of um i would like to describe myself as a bit cringe to say it, but i'd always describe myself as like the alt kid right in my area right the alternative kid because you know i grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood with predominantly black friends and i was the only person that was into like you know um listening to indie music you know punk wherever maybe metal going to metal festivals wearing band t-shirts skateboarding all that kind of nonsense kind of like typical non-black stuff right and for the most part what i really annoyed me about it was that on one side of things with my black friends i'd get teased about it which is fine because it's just you know they didn't really know about it or they weren't really exposed to it so i understand that but on the white side of things i'd also get dirty looks and kind of be treated as like a poser because i never dressed like them 
I purposely didn't want to look like them. I didn't want to turn up like to a skateboard meetup wearing like a blueprint t-shirt or something. Do you know what I mean? I kind of went out of my way to just dress normal and not dress like a typical person that's into that's into going to like Camden Underworld or something, right? That's wearing patches all over his damn track and shit. I try to go against that. And it always used to annoy me whenever you'd go to this kind of place and you see all these people who clearly think they're very unique and special and different, but they all look exactly the same. There's nothing unique or different about them at all. It's kind of the typical hipster thing, right? Right? trying so hard to be different but you're actually the same as everybody else or everybody else is into your little niche and then obviously the little infighting things that go on and I feel like in recent years especially in techno there has definitely been a, a especially in techno maybe in nightlife in general there's definitely been an increase in people clearly going out with more of a of a of a kind of defined look a, de a look that you would maybe ascribe to maybe like cities like berlin where people take nightlife very seriously and when they go out they go out as a form of expression as a form of um protest as a form of liberation whatever the word is fucking is right they did they use nightlife as a kind of canvas to kind of tell a story or whatnot right whatever it may be and um but then you don't really see that it wasn't really a thing that was common in London. You obviously saw it a lot in the kind of queer LGBT kind of scene. There was a lot of that going on in terms of people actually dressing up, going out in jog straps, going out with ball gags, latex, harnesses, blah, de, blah, blah, blah. But in recent years, it felt like it's become a really popular here in London. Like people are going out like and really going for it. But it's also a part of me that kind of feels like a lot of it is a bit posery is a bit cringe is a bit performative is a bit lame right just pure lame and for whatever reason even though i know i'm performing because i go out in my fucking rick shorts and my rick shoes or my new rock boots or my all black jordan force whatever i'm wearing my dr martin my double soul dr martin my jaden boots i'm sure i'm also somewhat being performative or whatnot but I don't know, man. It just feels like being surrounded by people in a club that looks like that just kind of rubs me up the wrong way a little bit. And it really shouldn't, I know, but it just does. And what made me think of it was this. This label called 44 Label Group by the world-renowned DJ Kobolsi, right, who's also a resident was he a resident at Bergheim? Or did he, or did he got, is he the one that got kicked out? That's him, right? I'm pretty sure Kobolsi is the one that got, um, who got, um, who's not a resident anymore at Bergheim because he went through that whatever scandal in terms of him allegedly inviting, you know, um, women of the night back to the DJ booth or something. I don't know. Something happened, right? Something happened and he, and he basically got kicked off the residence program. But anyway, he's got a very popular sort of like um, label that he does and also a merch that design that he does, which is called 44 Label Group. I'm sure you've seen people wear it with the logo on the back. It's pretty sick. Um, Teletech in the UK have kind of done a similar sort of thing with their logo on the back. So there's a lot of these kind of, you know, techno labels out there. There's another one as well called NACT, N-A-K-T, which a lot of people take the piss out of, NACT Berlin which is very hipster very cringe um they take themselves very seriously despite the clothes they make being pretty average and bog standards and pretty much overpriced but still there's a been an upsurge i feel like in that kind of clothing in recent years and obviously this being another great example of it was kabosi you know world renowned dj basically doing the same thing with his kind of clothing and creating this specific clothing for people who like to go to nightclubs and for me it's just even when i say it, it sounds so so disgusting it's like it's like making skate wear skate clothes out on your skateboards were like it's a bit cringe i would prefer you just make good clothing it's like reason why i love supreme so much because supreme just make good clothes regardless so even if you read um interviews with james jebbia from the past he'll say the reason why he set up supreme is because whenever he went to skate shops he felt like the standard of skate clothing was really bad and he felt like the skaters deserved better than that right because they were he felt like very cultured they obviously people that cared a lot about their product um they had good attention to detail and stuff they were just you know in, in, in um, insanely cool in general so he wanted to obviously provide them with some level of clothing that kind of matched how he saw them in his head but it wasn't him coming in there and providing them with like better skate clothing or skate wear it was just no i'm going to give you better clothing in general here's a better quality t-shirt here's a better quality polo it's not going to have fucking trucks printed on the back but it's just going to be a cool polo with a reference that you would get if you know if you know kind of thing and i feel like club specific wear is a bit too much on the nose right it's these like even my glasses i had them in my bag and i was so cringed and by the people around me that i was out on the weekend i couldn't even pull them out of my bag to wear because i felt so ridiculous right <laughs> and i feel like that's what kind of genre specific or niche specific clothing does because it's very specific to the group it's like these go fast glasses kind of these oakley um 
Karen, uh, you know, Blue Lives Matter glasses that everyone's kind of wanking over these oak, which is quite funny, to be honest. The fact that, you know, this alternative scene, this underground scene that's very left-leaning, that's very LGBTQ queer friendly, has adopted the glasses of people who are predominantly right, right-leaning, don't believe in, you know, don't believe in abortions, are very much anti-gay or whatever it may be, especially when it comes to their own family. Uh, but it's obviously been copped in the scene. But anyway, that's regardless. So it's all that, it's all black, it's all leather. It's all, you know, com, com, combat sometimes here and there, small t-shirts, belts. Um, I don't know, just stuff that you generally see people wear in a club. I just feel like it's a bit cringy. So this is a little clip taken from 44 Label Group's Full of Fire Spring 2023. Uh, sorry, Spring 2023 um, yeah, collection. For whatever reason, the comments are turned off on the, on the video. So I'm not sure what's going on. I think the comments might have been brutal people taking the piss out of it but i thought this was incredibly cringe but also very smart in the for someone like a cobalsi right because you know dj career is not forever i don't think so i don't think any dj should be thinking about playing forever anyway you should be using it as a means or as a platform to do other things if you can play forever fair enough but i don't know it's, it feels like a wasted a wasted opportunity in life to kind of just do that only because you're getting exposed to so many different people you get to all these cool, cool places you're getting paid an obscene amount of money to well for the job that you're doing given you know the kind of level of work and whatnot you should be using this opportunity to kind of build and do other things whether it's setting up a label an agency um opening up a bar a restaurant whatever getting involved in you know in real estate that should be the way to do it and obviously if you're a convulsion you could do this collection you could just just keep churning out these fucking pretty mediocre nightlife kind of clothing then i'm sure people are going to keep swallowing it up so it's definitely smart on his side of things but for me as a fan of this culture it's a little bit cringe i have to be honest but this is a video i'll play quickly so you can get a viable what it's about And if you're watching on the audio, it's just a general fashion show. Um, from what I can see, actually, which is quite interesting, I'm gonna brighten the screen up. Here. The set, I think this is in Milan because I think he is also backed by the New Guards group. I'm pretty sure. Don't don't hold me on that, but I think Cobalt is also backed by New, which is the same company um, that was backing Off White. And the look of it kind of looks like a typical Berlin nightclub. I think the front of it is meant to mimic Bergheim kind of with the black kind of cladding in front of the entry before Bergheim was reopened during the pandemic and all the graffiti around it and shit. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And obviously you just got people coming out in various black attire, basically. So you're not really missing anything if you're just listening to this. Well, that's 0.720p. Don't get me wrong, oops. Don't get me wrong, this look is pretty sick. There's a look in here which is like a gray look with like a skirt or, is that a skirt or big shorts? I think that look is pretty sick. It's kind of like a, the, the hoodie is really nice too because it's sort of like a, a two piece hoodie with like a hoodie on top that's been cut on the sleeves and on the body. And then one bit is like dyed it's like over dyed and the other bit is like regular color it kind of reminds me of something that um, Matthew Williams did for Givenchy recently but that looks pretty nice I do like the look of that but overall do you really need to have 4-4 label group do something like that for you to purchase it or could you find this somewhere else do you know what I mean that doesn't really need to exist that's the kind of thing I'm saying and then they've got the Kanye rain boots as well that everyone's wearing So I'll just pause and just scoot around a bit so you can see some of the looks. But yeah, I just don't know. I think part of me feels like nightlife wear is a bit lame, but maybe I'm in the minority here. So if you are a fan of nightlife wear and, um, you know, I mean club wear in general, then please let me know in the comments down below. I'm not going to post pictures because I was going to just, you know, post pictures of people that I've seen online that wear this kind of stuff. But it's not fair to have people, random people online and just take the piss out of them in that regard. But you know the kind of person I'm talking about, the people that wear mesh, PVC, you know, straps and shit and ball gags. I don't know. Some, for some reason, it feels 
like people like that when you put a uniform on they feel as if they're like way more legit because they have a uniform on it's like you're not really though you look like everybody else in the queue do you know what I mean like especially if you're buying your shit from Amazon it's not exactly counterculture do you know what I mean you're not exactly sticking it to the man you're not exactly shocking people with your shit you know what I mean you want to shock someone with your shit like actually wear something really offensive wear like a fucking make America great hat again or something do you know what I mean um, wear like a t-shirt that's pro Putin um, where like a what, what's his name Xi Jinping the, the Chinese president flipping memorabilia or something you know I mean let's let's really go for it if we're gonna go for it but I thought the actual show of it was pretty cool the fact that they made people queue up and look like a fake a fake like a fake nightclub was really nice um, that's I guess makes some sense in it he's probably got his own music playing as well as a soundtrack so that kind of is a good little tie in I'm sure some people would like it I'm sure there's many kids around the world who aren't as cool as the people I kind of go um who I kind of stuck, who I kind of um, cross paths with when I go out sometimes. I'm not going to count myself in that, but the people who I see out, I'm sure there's other kids who just watch this from afar and just want to wear this and look cool amongst their little friends in Berlin, in Belgium, in Switzerland and shit, places like that, right? Where they're not really in this kind of super hardcore, cool, trendy shit. I'm sure they'll lap this kind of thing up. So that's kind of, it's probably for an international consumer base. It's probably not for even someone like me or the people that I maybe I'm associated with or around. So that probably makes a lot of sense. But in general, I just don't know, man. I just don't know. It cringes me out. It makes me feel like shit seeing you everywhere and seeing everybody kind of thinking they're really doing something by wearing this sort of stuff out in the clubs when they all look the same. I'd much rather see people actually wearing fashion pieces, like actually having a sense of style, actually looking like they're giving shit about what they wear instead of just putting uniforms on but again you know who am i to tell people what to do in their lives in it who am i but maybe i've been the wrong maybe I've been the minority if i mean i am let me know in the comments down below what you think i'd love to hear your opinion next on the list here so i shouldn't really take any satisfaction out of these sort of things because clearly i'm not at this company anymore so clearly i did something wrong too to kind of not be there at the company itself but i used to work at this company right a really long time ago and I have to say it was maybe one of the worst jobs I've ever had. Just not even in terms of like what they did, more so in terms of my overall vibe and how I was in my place in life at the time. I guess I just go through a shitty period in life. I don't know what was going on because I tend to do this thing where when I go through really troubling times, really hard times, I tend to kind of memory hole it. I tend to what, what they call retcon where you just, you know, you basically, you know, retcon's not even that. Retcon, you basically... um you tell your own version of what actually happened i just memory hold it i memory hold that shit it goes into a memory well do you know what i mean and it gets locked up with the flipping crazy lock and it never gets opened again and i can't really remember how where i was in my head whatnot but i do know i wasn't in a good place i do know i probably wasn't the best employee wasn't the best colleague but the company that I did work at was really shit like kind of a really weird toxic vibe um it was very clicky also which i can understand but i feel like sometimes in companies you know if you're gonna be because that company had a lot of churn a lot of kind of hiring and firing if you're gonna be hiring a lot of people you just have to make sure or if you're gonna let go of people and hiring a lot of people you have to make sure people that come in feel welcome so they're not leaving as much as you know what i mean as before you want to keep you want to have some level of attention and i feel like they didn't really have that level of attention or care about level of attention so there was a lot of kind of like clicky vibes there going on especially when it comes to like after hour times and people wanting to go for drinks you felt like people were like purposely not telling you certain things it just felt really weird i just didn't like it and um i didn't really vibe or click with people there too much so it was no real loss in that regard um, I do remember the last time I maybe bumped into them, people that I did work at that company was like at some random house party. I don't even know who it is. Do you know I, mean? I don't even know who I was speaking to at the time, but it was definitely some girl I was speaking to who invited me to a house party because she used to work there and I was obviously friendly with her and I went there hang out for a bit i don't know what exactly I, I don't even remember i really don't it's flipping bizarre how i memory well everything bad that happens in my life but anyway it, it did happen bad and i didn't like it it was a bad experience boo hoo hoo but anyway the company that has basically i'm talking about is this company called pollen and they're essentially like an events management company which i didn't know it actually even existed so it's quite cool when i did end up going there because the idea behind it was like oh shit i like nightlife i like events i like festivals i like clubs um i could learn something to this sort of thing especially you know 
given that I was a promoter in my own kind of previous life, that would make more sense. But the job itself was never actually like that kind of stuff. It was way more boring than how they advertised it. But hey, whatever. It's my fault for being there in the first place. But essentially what they do is that if you're familiar with like festivals and club nights and stuff, they usually send out email promo, right? Or they usually have like a site where you can buy a ticket or where you can like buy installments of a ticket or whatnot or whatever it may be or buy kind of add-ons to your ticket, VIP packages, tents, blah, 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 whatever it may be. And they will basically manage that in the back end. So for you, the punter, the customer, you'll just see Glastonbury, here's a ticket or whatever, you just go and buy another website, but you don't know in the back end, they actually outsource all that stuff to another company, which makes a lot of sense because if you're organizing a festival, the last thing you want to do, you know what I mean? You already saw that the toilets and you saw that the bar stuff. The last thing you want to do is be sitting there and kind of deliberating and making sure you're sending out email um, pushes to get people to sign up for tickets and stuff. So a lot of my time was spent sending out emails with like the header that says, you know, 98% of the tickets are sold, which clearly they weren't. Last time tickets or sending text messages and shit. Like it was really crazy. So that was the kind of stuff that I ended up doing. And um, yeah, it was really boring, really shit. Didn't really enjoy it for the most part, but they had a really big, client customer base and stuff and I really didn't understand why because for me I felt like the company wasn't that innovative wasn't that forward thinking um wasn't really doing anything core cool different they just kind of I guess monopolized it because of whatever I don't know I, did, I just didn't really understand why they were doing so well at the time and clearly they weren't because as this news um courtesy of Sky Sports says as follows bust um taxpayer backed events company pollen lays off bulk of staff right so it says administrators of taxpayer backed startup which sold travel experiences featuring music musicians such as Justin Bieber has laid off the bulk of his staff in this remaining UK workforce. So I know I'm laughing, but for some reason I felt like those guys when they when they when they heard that I left were maybe like, Oh my god, you know what I mean? Making it seem as if like I'm the one that lost that when actually I won because you know that place was toxic and it was shit. Um, so it's kind of fine to see that and obviously some of the people who I didn't like you know ha ha eat that but also it just kind of is vindicating for me because I definitely didn't understand why it was doing so well I just didn't, especially when I got in when you see it from the outside it's kind of like oh wow all this kind of lights and glamour and shit but when you get on the inside you're like you're not really doing anything that interesting why are you still in, in business and it's quite encouraging actually things like that because when you see startups like that that are able to employ so many people and whatnot it does give you some kind of encouragement that you are going to be okay too um in terms of setting up your own business one thing that I should have kind of probably known that was really bait that maybe it wasn't doing well if i remember correctly and i memory hold a lot of things but i do remember there always being an issue with money with pay it always came like you know a day late or some hours later jeremy there was always something to do if i'm not mistaken the pay was always some sort of issue people being worried I, did i get paid yet can i go out for lunch yet like those kind of like conversations around the workplace which is never i feel like a good recipe for a company i feel like when you have those kind of issues when people can't really talk openly about their problems um when people feel like they can't get promoted or can't advance in the company and when there's issues around money i feel like usually those are really um bad issues at a company that you kind of have to root out quickly because they're usually going to be your downfall from what i've seen um or you just create a toxic environment that just carries on trudging on you know um little by little and then people just keep leaving and leaving and leaving crow has yet to be formally appointed the minister of pollen subsidiaries but the company with the company's founders retaining control of those for the time being pollen has been scrambling to secure funding um no has scrambling to secure a rescue deal for weeks but the collapse just months after announcing 150 million funding around which included the government's future fund so they got 150 thousand 150 million and they still couldn't keep the lights on that goes to show the amount of money they must have been burning through. But again, their office was fucking sick. It was like a really open plans office, really nice looking. Um, we all got laptops, of course. Um, they had a gym inside there. They had a bar, if I'm not mistaken. This was their bar. Yeah, there was. There was a there was a bar in there. The staff room was fucking lovely. The kind of come community place where you kind of eat. There was loads of nights. Like, yeah, this this is clearly why. There was loads of occasions where they took us out for like pizza, team bonding things, drinks and shit. So that might explain why they were able to burn through so much, or why if it 150 couldn't support them. Um, the ticketing company backers included some of the biggest names in venture capital, um, which such as Northzone, Lands Lands Doe and Partners, the hedge fund, the company partners with music event promoters like Live Nation electric to to create exclusive packages for its customers in may it laid off around 200 people wow 
or roughly one third of it. I'm laughing. I don't know why I should be laughing, but honestly, fuck them. Um, laid off uh, was workforce followed by another 200 redundancies early this month. Um, founded in 2014 by brothers Callum and Liam Negus Fancy. Jesus, Negus Fancy. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the company had maintained in recent weeks that it was close to securing its future through a deal with an unnamed strategic investor. Matt Ingram, the managing director of Kroll and joint administrator of Pollen, said this week, um, Pollen has established itself as a leading global and this forefront of evolving experience travel sector. No, it isn't. The legacy of the COVID-19 pandemic has been a devastating impact on the growth of the model of the group, but the underlying concept and brand strategy of the business has established will present a compelling opportunity for travel sectors. No, it doesn't. So maybe they're just blaming COVID-19, but I can say with a degree of certainty that there was a lot of money being spent on frivolous things over there. And the fact that I didn't think it was that of an impressive of a business. And, you know, again, who am I? I've never set my own business. I, I know, but still, it didn't really impress me that much when I was on the inside. I sort of spending blows of money. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me why they did um, end up failing. This is we encourage an interested party to contact us without delay. Of course you do. Of course you do. But yeah, I take some glee in it. You know, a company that I was, um, uh, I felt like let go with, with absolute, with, with absolute um, warrant. I warranted that letting go because I wasn't really pulling my weight or bothered about that job at all in the slightest. But I'm also kind of happy about it because the people there did have a little bit of a stinky attitude. They did kind of go on as if like they were hot shit. They did kind of go on as if they were working for fucking Apple or some shit when it was just a company that was sending people, spamming people's inboxes on MSN, also of text messages and fucking email and, you know, bombarding them on social media with fucking updates about tickets being sold where they haven't been sold. Just nonsense shit. So clearly the business wasn't really connecting with people in general the moment they hit a, a little bit of a road bump they completely faltered 150 million they burned through plus whatever else they got on top of that insane 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 obviously just the people who you know who are decent people who got let go from there and you have to look for another job it is what it is i'm sorry about that but the people i didn't like go fuck yourself and enjoy that or go fuck yourself and hold that actually that's what you gotta say go fuck yourself and hold that god almighty anyway going on from that one um what else i was talking about um I'm actually, I was actually sitting down, right, um, minding my own business when I stumbled across this news on social media about a Lamborghini Urus Performante, right, Performante, and this is somebody like myself, clearly as you can see from how I'm pronouncing the, the fucking phrase, the fucking name phrase, the name of the fucking car, I'm clearly not a car guy, that might have to do with the fact that I live in London, it might have to do with the fact that I'm G-A-Y, I don't know, but regardless, I'm not the biggest car guy, right, in terms of knowledge about it, but I would like one day to own my own car, I would like obviously one day to have a license first, but, you know, I've got to, I want to basically get to that level where I have my own nice shiny car, and the plan's always been to kind of go out there and buy my first car, and it'd be like a Tesla or something, but I just wanted to quickly put a note on this, like the power of marketing, I'm obviously somebody that's, you know, somebody that's obviously a huge huge hip-hop fan and somebody that clearly follows a lot of the blogs online especially on instagram and shit and follows some of the biggest artists online also you know whatever maybe on instagram and social media and see some of their content blah 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 and it's quite clear that the only reason why i like this car this lamborghini urus is because of the proliferate of rappers and people that are associated with or near to the hip-hop community having this car and especially the recent clip i remember seeing of little baby having a um what are they called? Some person park his car from somewhere and him kind of looking at it, right? Um, and that video kind of went a little bit viral because he's just standing there looking at his, you know, his Aorus looks fucking incredible. He wrapped it really, really well. But in general, that's the only reason why I'm aware of this car and know why it's such a big deal. But it looks like such a statement piece. It looks so amazing. It looks so bloody burly, so manly looking, so aggressive. And the fact that it's a Lamborghini SUV is pretty insane, right? As a car to have. And it would be such a sick flex for this to be a first car that I end up copying. Just imagine out of the blue, right? I'm doing this YouTube thing. I'm pushing. I'm trying my best. I'm building. I'm going where I need to go. Subscribers are going up. Views are going up. Um, you know, you're seeing me getting booked to DJ at these crazy good places. I've opened up my own creative studio somewhere. I'm consulting for brands. I'm doing all this crazy, amazing stuff, and then suddenly you just see me pop up with a Lamborghini Euros. I don't think I'd actually look that weird in one actually i think it actually suit me oddly enough because i guess people would look at me and think oh he's definitely involved in music he's definitely stealing someone's masters he's definitely stealing someone's royalties as a manager or something right someone will definitely think that but still i do think it's definitely a car that i am weirdly interested in and i think only the reason why is because of the power of marketing from these rappers not because of lamborghini this is the first time in my life that i've actually been on a lamborghini website right 
didn't know existed. I didn't know you could create your own Lamborghini here on the website as it looks like you can do a little Nike ID type thing, I guess, look on the website and change the colors and whatnot or the specifications. I didn't know it existed. I'm sure it does. I didn't know it did it before today. And, but the whole reason why I know this car is so good and I'm so impressed by it and I want it so much is because I see my favorite rappers make it look so cool and make it look so appetizing. So I do wonder if these car companies and these brands actually do give rappers free cars as they you know you know how people get seated trainers and clothes and stuff i wonder if car companies do the same thing because i know there's some industries where they don't see that all I, I forgot which one it was there are a lot of industries off, off the top of my head maybe it is a car company car industry there's a lot of industries where they don't actually see they don't actually give out free cars to certain influencers to drive or maybe to kind of have they maybe give it to you to lend to do a review if you're youtube and shit but for the most part they don't actually give you a car because they think oh you're gonna you've got a good reach, people respect your opinion on cars, you're going to get this seen in different places, no, they just, you know, the car's the price it is, you can maybe have a test drive and drive it early, but it is a price, here it is, you have to buy it, blah, 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 but I think there's a lot more people like myself who, again, I'm not a car person, who might have seen a Lamborghini or a little baby video, and thought, you know what, I need that, they might have seen Kanye driving one, I need that, Travis Scott, I need that, and I think those guys should get some they should be getting slipped some sort of money or some something or the like because they've I can only imagine the amount of people they've influenced to kind of and this is what real influence is about like something that I don't give a shit about in terms of cars someone cool that I'm kind of that I kind of like or that I look up to buying one or having one and then me wanting it also because I look up to them that's what real influence is about do you know what I mean making me pay attention to something I don't give a shit about at all but this Lamborghini Urus is absolutely incredible man it really is really good looking um, that Lamborghini SUV you know what I mean you really can't go wrong um it's probably a little bit too big and a little bit too gigantic and a little bit too you know sh sh you know testicle showing in the uk because the streets here are so narrow and stuff there's probably no reason to have a car this big but you know people in the uk love driving range rovers and range rover sports and shit because of that very reason because it makes you look like an absolute beast on the road so yeah definitely something that i'm definitely considering getting so if you see me um you know in 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 a few months time uh doing a car review of a lamborghini urus don't be surprised don't be alarmed i'm promise i'm not selling drugs this is definitely all from legal adventures and it all is the kind of consequence of watching too many hip-hop videos and consuming too much hip-hop um social media blog stuff online and stuff that's the main reason why i probably end up getting one i do guarantee you in that one i do guarantee you on that one and then to continue on some sick news actually great news supreme's full winter 2022 collection finally dropped in terms of the preview and the lookbook which is the most important part of it because the preview isn't even you know it's, it's extensive they should call it an extensive full-blooded preview but in general the preview is always a good time for supreme fanatics like myself and others around the world you get a chance to kind of tick off the things that you want to buy write them down note them take screenshots i mean beforehand i used to record no way they should do i used to just do put them in um, a pdf um with like notes and stuff i went to cop and whatever it may be and usually the list will be super long by the time the collection comes out you only buy like end up buying five old pieces from the collection because you forgot because you don't have any money whatever it may be but it's always nice to kind of look for the preview and dream about stuff that you would want to purchase but one thing that's always clear that's always evident and that is beyond reproach is that the full winter 2022 collection is always i think the pinnacle of what supreme do their full collection is so bloody good so i think because i feel like as much as supreme are known for their hoodies and their t-shirts and stuff i still think they are unparalleled when it comes to their fucking jumpers knitwear and most importantly coats and jackets they have some of the best coats and jackets you've ever seen and if the reason that's annoying is because i think to myself if i was ever seated by supreme or if i was able able to get some discount from supreme the first thing that would be really hard not to do would be to buy a million jackets that's the thing that i would do the most i just go in there if i had discount and be able to buy two jackets the thing you know one jacket is like 300 quid so you're not exactly be able to buy two all the time but if you're if you get 20 percent off of them you can maybe get two for like 400 right 450 which would make it way more tempting to go out and buy two jackets like one maybe down one um you know one waterproof thing one maybe nice one whatever maybe you could always kind of kind of double up on that regard and i think that's the main thing that i'll do so i think supreme doesn't get enough credit for their jackets their jackets are really fucking good and this collection is no exception and i want to just show it to you here on screen so of course the supreme website 
and the preview is there. Of course, they got news of when well, it's actually dropping. I'll just quickly read that to you now. So it says the full Winter Twenty Two collection um, is going to be available in stores and online from this Thursday. So if you go and got any money, I'm sorry about that. Um, most people like myself get paid at the end of the month, but luckily I did save some just in case something did come out. So I'm gonna be able to buy some bits and pieces from the first shop. So I'm looking forward to that one. And then what is the and then the rest of Japan, um, Japan stores and online on the 27th. The preview is available now. So yeah, let's check out the preview anyway in general, so you can just see what I go on. And then I'll talk to you about the stuff that I liked straight away, right? So I can give you an idea of the things that I'm really, really into. So let's do view all. Usually I don't like, when I first watched, when I first clicked the preview, I'm sure other Supreme fans are like myself. When I first clicked through the preview, I never like to do, do view all. I only do view all when I finish doing it the first way around. When I first do it, I like to go through every single box. Each box has like different items in it on different slides. You can check out different color variations. I like that shit. I like to kind of be surprised all the time. It's really cool. Um, but if you want to just check them all out once, you can just click view all here. So the view all button comes up and then they all kind of get listed in. Something that I'm immediately into straight away, that was a real hard thing to kind of figure out what color I'd want, is this down jacket. <laughs> this down parker, sorry. It's a Gore-Tex 700 field down parker and it's in silver. I want that. Number one, because there was an old bape jacket from back in the day. I think it might have been like... 2008 2010 i don't know when it was right and it was silver and i always wanted it and it was a kind of down jacket in the same sort of style as this and you know of course i never ended up getting it because that busy workshop in flipping upper james street was a rigged game right it's even more rigged than fucking sneakers app at the moment or just buying sneakers in general absolutely rigged um so yeah fuck everybody they used to buy anything over there they used to be successful i didn't the most successful i was was when i went in once and i bought flipping a t-shirt with sellotape absolutely incredible anyway we digress the silver parker is stupendous it looks absolutely amazing it looks a bit nuts it looks a bit crazy i understand but for me and for the stuff that i like to wear i'm definitely into it the only issue is that the other colors are just as good they've got a color here in like this olive green which is fucking gorgeous but i have a little i have a coat that i bought recently from angland and i've got another kind of double taps one that i also bought that's the same sort of color so maybe it's not the right thing to get the blue um color is absolutely gorgeous as well and obviously the black is a classic but you know it's probably not a good idea to go and buy black jackets from supreme unless they're a particular design because you can maybe get them anywhere else you know i mean it's better just to kind of mix it up a little bit especially when it comes to your wardrobe and whatnot i think for me that's what i definitely would like to do but i'm definitely into the silver joint here right this kind of 700 filled down jacket definitely something i'll definitely cop instantly they're talking about black jackets actually this jacket here which is something that i actually need to replace because i've got a I don't actually own, I don't think, a waterproof jacket. I think all my waterproof jackets are actually sold. I've got water resistance, but I don't have any waterproof jackets. So this is a um, Gons Gore-Tex shell jacket made by Supreme. And I think I mentioned before on this podcast ages ago that I felt like Supreme were definitely going into the direction of designing and making or producing, manufacturing their own um, rain waterproof jackets and not doing more collabs on them. So they've obviously got the collabs they do with Stone Island and the collabs they do with like North Face, but for the most part, in the past, they would maybe marry up with a brand who does a particular kind of jacket really well, a particular style, and just use their resources because, you know, you could just get it done at the highest level that way. But I feel like Supreme's manufacturing or production levels have really improved over the years where they feel confident enough to kind of just put out their own versions of certain things. So that's why now in these collections, you see way more Supreme branded down jackets, way more Supreme shell jackets like this they would have maybe collaborated on in the past. So this is pretty cool to see. So this is a typical shell jacket with some nice diagonal zip. Uh, you know um what you call it sealed uh pockets on the front here some pockets here on the on the wrist that's pretty cool and then it's got a nice little cap hood here on the front and the front of the zip kind of pulls up over your mouth so that's pretty nice as well and i always like always like the addition of the pull ties towards the side of the hood as well because it allows you to kind of get the hood to kind of fit your face a little bit a little bit more tight especially if you want the hood the hat to look pretty sick on there but the design obviously at the back is definitely the piece of resistance you got this sick um guns um obviously mark gonzalez painting here on the back um which features uh an image depicting jesus on a cross but the color that i'm thinking of getting is either the camo no the kind of thinking of colors of him getting is the camo and the black the black obviously to be an everyday jacket that i can wear day to day with obviously the thing on the back of it and then of course the camo to replace a jacket that i've got 
that's a collaboration between oh who is it again it's like a zoo york it's like an old streetwear brand i got from ages ago i got two of them that i bought ages ago at some um streetwear market thing but i always wanted to replace it with like an actual waterproof gore-tex jacket and i think this might be the key especially if i'm going to be cycling a lot this winter as well around town and whatnot i definitely like to have those two jackets so again it's already three jackets that i'm already on right in the Supreme Four in the country, you can already see how mad I'm going with this thing already. There's a really cool Jeff Hamilton collaboration jacket here too. If you're into that kind of stuff, it's not really for me. I don't really like what it looks like, but I like everything around. Actually, let me show you what it looks like. Obviously, you know what Jeff Hamilton does when it comes to leather jackets. And then the really cool thing about it is that they've got this custom bag that it comes in, which says Jeff Hamilton logo here on the outside. And then they've got this um, typical authentication as well that comes inside it too, which is pretty sick. So I'm really curious to see how the Chinese factories try to copy this and fake this because this looks absolutely insane in terms of the quality. But again, it's not something that I would particularly wear. So not something I'm really interested in. And the other thing that I thought was really cool was, of course, this reversible jacket. Again, we're already up to silver. To, we're up to four jackets here that I'm already, I'm already considering to buy, right? This jacket is absolutely insane. This is a reversible featherweight down parka. It says here it's water resistant, so it's not waterproof, but the water won't drench the entirety of the jacket if you don't stay out too long. Um, it's got Kodora nylon ripstop with the down insulated quilted baffles, full zip closure with zip pockets, lower front. Is anyone else like really like the product descriptions that Supreme do? They do really good product descriptions, just really to the point, precise product descriptions. Put a logo on the hood, original artwork by Cockney. I don't know who Cockney is, but regardless, I love the artwork. It looks really cool. Um, it's probably a little bit youngy for me it's probably a little bit gen z ish right it's kind of the kind of thing you would expect somebody that wears pearl necklaces and paints their nails black to wear but in general i do like it especially the red one because you know i don't actually have a lot of red jackets in my collection it'd be a nice thing to kind of add to it and also the um reversible side of it is absolutely great looking so it's red like this with this amazing artwork it looks like a dragon on the outside with supreme written all over it and then the inside when you reverse it's just like a regular down jacket in red like that with these great little um mesh patches there on the side so it looks really cool man like it looks really really nice i'm not gonna lie i really do like the look of that i really do like the look of that so definitely that one in red is definitely something to keep an eye on already up to four jackets there the other thing too that i really like to like the look of is maybe these little flannel um puffer jacket type things again you know why i like the kind of things i'm always into flannel and i still regret flipping losing my balenciaga um flannel as well a while back but i do ended up buying another one but it's not the right color i need to get back the blue one um of course this shirt here is absolutely stupendous i'm sure a lot of people are going to be copying this one it's a heavenly silk polo a polo t-shirt um, with this amazing heavenly artwork here in the middle I'm not sure who actually designed it maybe somebody in-house but it looks really really ridiculous really really cool and then another thing too they've got this really nice lgbtq gradient little knit that looks there sweater that looks really good again like i said before supreme knits are really underrated they've got this as well that reminds me of like an old chanel piece this contrast stitch button up um with made of merino wool blend so that's really going to be lovely to kind of get in your hand and touch and whatnot and then of course this is a really piss resistance i'm really into this um this gremlin um gremlin hockey jersey because i had to throw away a jersey that i had that i really liked because it was kind of you know the whites were becoming yellow and gray and shit but this would definitely kind of replace that because this is basically the same sort of color scheme so this is definitely something that i'm gonna 100 percent be robocopping because i threw away my one my one recently um so that's a really nice one that hockey shirt and then i'm showing you a couple more pieces then we're gonna move on another thing also i'd like to point out is the hats the hats are very 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 underrated when it comes to supreme especially the five panels because my head is so big it's great to see five panel hats make a it's great to see supreme still putting energy into making five panel hats because it feels like everybody's wearing those kind of dead kind of camp hat sort of thing which my hair like this could never fit and even when it's braided just doesn't look good because i've got a big head and i really do like this one in specifically which is a collaboration with iraq again one of my favorite brands and graffiti crews out there um most of you would be aware of that anyway i was the person that used to wear the flipping iraq hoodie i was so damn it 
pissed off that I fucking sold that hoodie. It was an Iraq hoodie that had Iraq at the front, Iraq at the back, backwards, um, in big font with yellow, and then the outside of it was printed in 3M so that when you're riding your bike, it would shine. I don't know why I sold that fucking hoodie, but I did ages ago. But anyway, regardless, Iraq did a collaboration with Supreme. They've got, I think they've got a hoodie, they've got a, they've got a balaclava, they've got trousers, and they've also got this hat that's a Supreme logo, and it's got um, the Iraq written font over, over the top of it as well. I'm not sure actually who actually created the font for Iraq. I'm not sure if it was it's not somebody else but regardless the font looks sick over the top of it so that hat is really sick and the last thing to point out that I really like as well is the bags I need the backpack so the backpack is definitely something that I'm considering to buy because I need to replace my one because it's absolutely busted um so the silver one of course would look cool to match the fucking jacket I'm going to get but I might end up just sticking with the black to be kind of standard but I really do like the silver as well I think the silver looks really really good and I think in general all these bags in this collection look amazing I'm, I'm kind of bummed they stopped kind of numbering the bags because I think the last time I had a bag was like I had like a, a 12th and maybe a 13th no I had 11th and a 13th but now they stopped numbering them because before they would number the bags i know there's definitely a website out there that still probably numbers them now but that was a standard thing they did they've got this huge massive large whole tote bag thing that looks fucking incredible um again the duffel bag is always a favorite of mine that i never end up getting but i'll probably end up getting it this time around to have something to take to, to have something to take my shit to the gym with and whatnot um they've got a nice shoulder bag here that i'm sure that'll be really popular again because it's got supreme written on the front of it waist bag is always really impressive again but the bags this time i was really impressed by even this little collection of an organizer pouch looks really cool Kodora. and i think this is really cheap too i remember seeing the price being something like 50 or 30 dollars or something which is crazy and yeah i really like the look of the bags really like the look of the accessories and as per usual it all looks absolutely fantastic and you can even check out some of the lookbook pictures as well they look really cool um we've got a lookbook pictures here features some of the jeff hamilton pieces you know standard sort of wear all styled really well as per usual you can't go wrong when it comes to premium this sort of stuff and yeah man that's that silver jacket looks hard in it come on man you know that looks hard i can't wait i'm definitely gonna try and get it definitely gonna try and get it it's probably gonna be a buck and it's gonna, gonna be a lot of money so it's gonna be cheap and again that that jacket too i like too that red one with the dragon on it is absolutely crazy but it definitely is worth trying to see if i can cop that the rest of it oh and there's a true religion collaboration coming up too that hasn't been announced that looks pretty sick i'm sure people are going to be into that um that looks really really cool as well and yeah that that flannel kind of puffer jacket i wanted looks really nice i'm just not a fan of all the logos in the back of it but again this is how i have to, I have to kind of expect except with this version of supreme there's always a, an abundance of like these logo things a script written on the back and stuff there's a lot of this in yesterday years that would never have been on there there would have just been like a little red tag on the side of the scene but they've done a lot of this sort of like you know logo font stuff happening and it's just annoying a little bit but hey this is the new version of Supreme. And again, that jacket is super hard, even in that color. But again, I'll probably end up going for the black and the camo. And then there's another one to show you quickly. The last is this jacket here. It was really underrated, I think. But it'll end up being popular because I think this image is really, really tough. So I'm sure people will end up copying it anyway, regardless. But I think this jacket is really slept on. Um, very, very nice. Um, it's kind of white again if you listen to us on podcast only it's white body with like a black strip on the shoulder and a red strip going over right down to the end of it as well it looks really really beautiful i'm really big fan of it but again full full winter supreme never disappoints you can never go wrong with it they always kind of smash out of the park so um yeah we definitely be trying to get some stuff this thursday when it eventually does drop talking about full winter collections and dropping Stussy have also decided to drop and tease their full 2022 lookbook showing all their new wares and i think this is, might be the greatest time in history to be a fan of streetwear legitimately think about all the big dogs right think about Stussy. think about supreme um then think about all the other up-and-coming brands and think about all the brands that exist only on instagram then think about all the kind of local la brands the new york brands the brands that we have here in london the brands that are in paris all these different places around europe and whatnot everyone's doing some really cool shit because everyone has access to decent level manufacturing you can send your stuff off to china to portugal to turkey to get done and whatnot you can print your stuff and many Manufacture your things in the US if you want to also and have it all be made in the US. So if you're really a fan of streetwear, nowadays I feel like it's the best time ever to be a fan and to also partake and to participate. You know what I mean? To actually start your own brand is actually it's actually never been easier time or a 
better time to start your own brand because it feels like everybody's into it. Sneaker industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. I'm pretty sure streetwear is not far behind it also. Everyone wants to look fly. Everyone wants to look cool, especially when you're a kid in school and stuff. You just want to impress your friends. You want to look fly. You want to make sure people know that you know what's up and there's no way of showing that better. I remember when I was growing up, the main thing, even though I was wearing stuff at Supreme, was also to be always on to the next brand coming up. Oh, this guy was an ex-Supreme staff. Oh, this guy used to design for Mighty Healthy. This guy used to design for Adidas. I mean, all that kind of stuff and knowing who was next up, knowing what brand was sick was always a part of kind of showing how cool you are and how up you are and things. So it really is a great time. I feel like everyone's kind of pushing each other because, you know, there's only so many t-shirts a man could have. There's only so many jackets a man could have, right? So you really have to try to make sure you create something special that your customers are really gonna want. So it feels like everybody's really on their A game when it comes to putting out stuff. There's no, there's there's some brands out there that are terrible, but that's just because you know the people behind it don't know what they're doing. But for the most part, I feel like everybody that's really trying, that's really talented, that's really persistent, that's really consistent, they're really trying their best to outdo some of the big dogs out there and make sure that customers, because they all share customers, right? The customers that would go out and buy stuff from supreme or stussy are also considering buying from their little brand that they have on shopify so i've loved that shit and again think about all the other brands the skateboarding uh, specific ones only right they're kind of like the sci-fi fantasy stuff and all that kind of people like people are doing some strong stuff out there man like really strong the dimes you know the bronze like there's so many cool brands out there that exist it's absolutely incredible but anyway back to stussy stussy fall 2022 lookbook some decent stuff in here showcasing as well it says here for fall 2022 stussy captures a portrait of our london friends and family alongside an iconic eight ball the collection delivers family silhouettes um first delivery first delivery will be uh available worldwide in europe on the 19th which is just gone so you'll be able to get that already now if you're here in the uk and obviously the rest of them you can see there but let's get to the pictures that's the most important thing straight away you see uh, maybe a potential stussy collaboration it looks like that might be an an air max if i'm not mistaken and it might be of tl if I'm, i don't know what the number it was again it's a two, it's the one that was like 150 back in the day in foot look i remember, forgot the model but instantly i see a potential um nike calibration that's pretty decent um the pictures look really great too i think this is actually taken in the stussy store in london because i'm sure they have this eight ball in there somewhere um yeah the pictures look really great there's nice little varsity jackets here going on there's obviously a collaboration with dr martin's coming up um nice fleeces that they always do well with nice over shirts nice trousers nice sleeveless t-shirts that logo always worked really well that that jacket with the dice on the back is amazing all great amazing looks nice knits oh that jacket with the print fucking hell what is that is that like a camo print is that like a print of a surface it's like a surface right like an overhead shot of something like yeah like that's a beach that's some land or something that jacket looks hard We'll check the store in a minute and see what that's about. Nice knit there, nice trousers. I like that they always mix in the unisex stuff to make sure people know what I want. Again, a better idea and look at the of the trainers. Nice print shirt there. Nice fleece there. Nice look. Everyone looks like they've been arrested though, isn't it? Lack of smile. Everyone looks like they've been arrested. <laughs> but the pictures are lovely though, regardless. Um, nice little shirt there. Good little sweatshirt. A nice little half zip flannel you know the stuff that you expect from fucking supreme i'm oh, my first Stussy, sorry let's go to the store and see wagwan see the new stuff actually in individual so i can actually pick out some stuff that i actually would be interested in so yeah that fleece that pattern shop of fleece is definitely uh an insta cop you know that vibe you know me when it comes to quilted padded flannel so this thing is fucking great has it got a logo on the back hopefully it does have a logo on the back if it does have a logo on the back it's a good buy if it's got a logo on the back i'm pissed oh it's already sold out mate XL sold out, green is sold out, XL2. Oh, green, yeah, green is, is available, but the blue is definitely the best color in it. That's probably why everyone's got the blue, yeah. And then the black is also, I guess, sold out too in that color. No, XL okay, is available. Okay, yeah, no logo on the back, so that's pretty decent. Oh, look at those boots they got available. Oh, there's a Danny Stussy collaborations coming up, right? They look really nice, in it? So that flannel looks really impressive. I'm really a fan of that padded flannel. It's called a quilted fatigue shirt, actually but it does look somewhat insulated for the winter months. Let's go back to the rest of the collection here uh, before we move on. Nice little classic poplin shirt that's nice here. The little tiger print um, sweater vest that Tyler would wear, I'm not really a fan of. That's the dice quilted jacket that's really hard. Um, I'm a fan of that. Oh yeah, that coastline beach, yeah, of course it's sold out already. 
See, I'm, I saw that and I instantly wanted it. And then when I go to click, it says it's sold out. Of course it is. That is a hard jacket. That Coastline jacket is hard, hard, hard. So hard I'd consider buying it on resale. That is a nice fucking jacket. With the camo pants as well. Other cab camo double knee pants that they've been styled with. The styling on the Stitcher style as well is not shabby. I'm not going to lie. YKK 5 metal 2 way zip closure. Would I like to prefer Riri, but still we move. Oh, that jacket is fucking hard, man. You can't deny it. It really is. Back vent. Wrangland sleeves. Oh, tough. We continue. We digress. A couple of sold out. Oh, I'm surprised the curly S sweaters are sold out quite quickly. The 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 Nico over trousers, I'm not surprised with because they look really cool. In terms of the shape. You got the dyed bomber and that's still available. That's sold out. The 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 beach chair sold out. Like some interesting things were sold out first, isn't it? I wouldn't be so I'd be surprised that sold out. That that stew snapback is pretty funny. I like that. But yeah, some brilliant stuff for stew as per usual. If you haven't already, definitely go check them out. They put out some cool shit. They're always consistent, always on it. And yeah, it's always nice to see what they have available. It's always nice to see. And then, I think that might be it for the show, actually. I think that might be it. I've got many other, yeah, I think that might be it for the show for now, actually. Let me leave it there. Actually, no, let me not leave it there. What am I talking about? One more thing to talk about here. Uh, no, I think that's it. Let me leave it there for now. Yeah, let me leave it there for now in terms of the show. I think I think we kind of covered most of the bases. Um, and then we are going to keep it moving. So once again, thank you so much for tuning into the Agostino Zynga Show. It's been a pleasure to have your company today. I really have enjoyed it. And um, yeah, man, thank you so much for tuning in and hanging in there with me. I know I haven't been around for a while, but, you know, I'm getting back on it again and slowly but surely starting to get my feet wet again. You know, the Patreon still hasn't been updated in a while, but please forgive me. That will come very soon. Um, but in general, thank you so much for supporting the show. Thank you so much for chilling. Uh, thank you for those that joined the Discord, for those who are liking videos, subscribing, sending me DMs and emails and shit and encouraging words. I really do appreciate that. And hopefully I can repay that faith by putting out some decent content and hopefully there'll be another live stream coming up soon in terms of the random show so if you like that kind of comedy centric stuff for me then definitely keep an eye out for that that should be happening maybe this week maybe on the day that i'm off and stuff i'll do that again maybe get some beers as well and try and make that fun so definitely keep an eye out for that one but apart from that it's been a pleasure it's never been a chore thanks so for tuning in it's been great and i'll see you guys again very very soon take care peace